Hey, what up squad? It's your boy KFlow. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the gears in your rear diff. Let's get this thing started. If you're new to this channel, this channel makes the most in-depth Tacoma DIY tutorials. So smash that like and subscribe button, baby. And make sure you hit that bell too so you're up to date with my latest video releases. This video is part two of the re-gearing series. I'm actually re-gearing my truck to 4.88s. And on top of that, I'm also doing front and rear lockers. This video is a core swap of the third member, which I did buy from East Coast Gear Supply. And I'm not gonna go over the details of why I did a core swap instead of full blown ring and pinion replacement by myself, because I did a full detailed comparison on that in part one of this video series. So if you haven't checked that out yet, check that out first. And now let's get to the garage. So there it is guys, I'm pretty excited. Let's crack this thing open now. So we'll start out with cracking the small box open. Look at that, it even has my name on them. And I think these are the hose kits for the air lockers because I got actually both front and rear air lockers. So that's cool. Open this up. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what it is. Still covered in grease though. Nice, well at least all the hoses and fittings are in here. All right, in that same box, it looks like there's the receipt as well as the break-in procedure. So I'll touch more on this, I guess more towards this end of the series. So obviously there's some specialized things that you have to do once you install these. So now let's crack these open. I'm gonna keep these on the ground because they're pretty friggin' heavy. Roughly 70 plus pounds each. So I'll have to try not to destroy these boxes because I will be shipping my swapped cores with them. Alrighty guys, there they are. They're actually not terribly heavy, but it's really awkward having the box and everything being really soft on the outside and it's just very cumbersome trying to pick it up. That's something not really solid. But right off the bat, you can tell that this really has a nice finish. They definitely painted it well. Here's another few shots of that surface. Pretty nice. And here's another angle of that front diff. This is definitely the air inlet for the lockers in the front. And here's another angle. As you can see, I opted for new seals. And that's pretty sweet that they did. Also grease the inside of that seal. I also opted in for the new ECGS clamshell bushing in there so I don't have to deal with that needle bearing. Definitely would want to go with that when you do this core swap. Spins real smooth. You can see all the gears in there. And here's the rear diff. And this is the hose for the air locker. Routed all the way to the housing. I'll spin it around so you guys could see it better. Again, really nice finish on the outside there. There's the fitting for the air locker. Overall guys, everything looks really good. Can't wait to install them. 
All right, guys. So I'll start up with chalking those front tires, then jacking up the rear and putting up the rear on jack stands. So now we're here at the rear drive shaft, guys. We'll have to remove the four nuts and bolts holding that drive shaft against the flange of the rear diff, as you see there. So what I like to do is brush off all the threads with a wire brush and hit them with some PB blaster. Then I'm gonna let it soak. And then I'll have to use a 14 millimeter socket and wrench to remove those bolts. So what I did there was I took the e-brake off and then rotated the drive shaft so that I can get the two other bolts in a better position. Yeah, look how cold it is guys. So I'm keeping those two nuts and bolts there for now while I try to break this flange loose from the, uh, the drive shaft. So here, I'm using bungee cords to hold that drive shaft against that frame. And what I'm going to do now is pretty much brush off all the threads there and also hit it with some PB blaster. So while we're waiting for those nuts to soak in the PB blaster, we can now drain the fluid from this rear diff. We'll take off the fill plug first and then the drain plug and we'll use a 24 millimeter socket to remove those plugs. So now that the PB blaster has soaked, Let's break those nuts loose with a 14 millimeter socket. Don't lose those washers on the third member when removing. So I use a flat head screwdriver to pull out each one so that I don't lose them or drop them. All right guys, so now we'll have to remove this ABS line here and then brush off all the threads on the studs that hold that hub portion of the axle. And then we'll hit it with some PB blaster and let it soak. So that you guys get a better understanding of how to remove this thing, you take a screwdriver and wedge it in between right there, then shove it in there, it'll actually lift up the little locking piece of the plastic and this should just slide right off. So I did make sure to hit both sides of the hubs so that they're soaking in real good. Now at this point I also have these bolts along this brake line soaking with PB blaster as well. There are a total of five bolts to be removed on that brake line so that it's free from the axle housing. And now we could take off those bolts and those are 12 millimeter bolts. And now we can undo those four nuts using a 14 millimeter socket and a breaker bar.
So now we can pull this whole hub off and put a long socket in there to work as a spacer. So now we'll have to do the same thing at the opposite side. So this third member is pretty heavy guys. What I'm gonna do to keep myself safe would be to thread in two of the nuts up top and then use a hammer with a piece of 2x4 to loosen the seal between that third member and that axle housing. So that actually wasn't too bad guys. The secret is to actually get the socket and pull this axle pretty much about two and a half inches out so that it clears the diff. And that diff just came right out. I just want to clarify that the reason for taking all those bolts off of that brake line is so that brake line can actually stretch so that those hubs can be pulled out from the axle like that. So it's really important that you do this carefully and when it's somewhat of a warmer day. So luckily today is, is in the 60s. So that at least helps with the pliability of the material so they don't crack anything. So that technique worked really well. Again, thank you to Tacoma Holic and Randy Fab for putting that video together. And there's the two side by side in comparison guys. This is the one I just pulled out and here's the new one. So you can see this one's covered in grease. Open diff with the TRD Sport. Now I'll have to box this up and ship it to ECGS. Now we can clean up that whole mating surface for the third member with a razor blade as well as some acetone so that we can get some good adhesion of that new sealant we're going to put on there. Now you don't have to go too crazy with the razor blade. You just have to make sure that most of the chunks of the old gasket is removed and make sure Really, it's more important to have the acetone clean up that surface so that the, ga the gasket maker sticks properly. So here's the new diff, guys. It'll be a good idea at this point to clean up all of the mating surfaces as well. So I'm going to put this on the axle housing as opposed to the third member because there's really no good way to grab the third member to install it and I don't want that gasket maker to make a mess everywhere. So I did make sure that the gasket maker goes around the bolt as well, just in case that the oil seeps through and weeps between the stud and the housing. So now we install the nuts and those are 14 millimeter nuts tightened down at 18 foot pounds and these have to be tightened down in a crisscross pattern. Don't forget to put the washer behind the nuts before reinstalling. And what I mean by crisscross as in you tighten the one bolt there and then skip two and then go to the next one, tighten that one, and then skip two, and eventually you'll go all the way around and tighten all the bolts. This ensures that the whole face properly seats up against the housing.
So at this point guys, I'm going to remove the socket holding this thing open and then I'll clean up all that crud there, put everything back together. I did anti-seize the inside of those wheel hubs to make it easier for removal for next time. Definitely disengage the e-brake when reinstalling the wheel hubs. This allows some movement in the axle so that the splines can line up you would need to lift that hub just slightly in order to do so. And we'll do the same thing at the opposite side. Those nuts we torque down to 27 foot-pounds. Make sure to tighten down the hubs in a cross pattern. Now we can also install the bolts that hold that brake line down. And those are 12 millimeter bolts tightened down to 15 foot pounds. Don't forget to reinstall the ABS line for both sides. So at this point, it'll be a good idea to apply some anti-seize on this surface of the flange as well as remove all of the corrosion and any type of crud on the yoke of the drive shaft. So I'm actually going to apply the anti-seize on the yoke side. And right now, I do have the truck in neutral so I can spin this drive shaft. And we do have to make sure we put blue Loctite on these nuts and bolts. So these are tying down to 65 foot pounds guys and you have to put the truck in gear so that the drive shaft doesn't spin as you tighten those nuts and bolts down. And you have to tighten it in a crisscross pattern. So at this point we could reinstall the wheels and torque them down to 85 foot pounds. Remember to tighten them down in a star pattern. The only other thing would be to take the truck off of the jack stands and fill her up with 85W140. And that's the recommended fluid by ECGS for these new ring and pinion gears. Now I won't be going over the procedures for filling up the rear diff because I have a whole separate video for that. So make sure you check that out. So just a few final thoughts guys. This job is definitely something that you can do solo. It's not too difficult. It is just heavy and awkward. That third member doesn't really have any good places to grip and when you pull it out and you put it in it's just very cumbersome so be very careful when you perform that part of the procedure. Now when it comes to putting the third member in I actually ended up practicing in the garage. I was laying down the creeper and I was picking up the third member from my right side over my chest and holding it to the proper height. So at least that gives you an idea of how heavy that is and how much you have to lift it because it's much easier to do it when you have a lot of free space around you as opposed to being under the truck. So that's something that you can possibly do before you actually do the installation of this job. And now the other thing too is that these lockers on the front and rear diff require an air source 
So I'm not gonna be going over the details of putting in an onboard air inflator system because that will be a whole new full-blown tutorial for just that. So make sure you stick around and stay tuned for the rest of the series and make sure you smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet because that really helps out this channel. So that's pretty much it for today guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, peace.